Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Denver Landmark Preservation is kicking off its 2024 design guidelines updates with a focus on accessory dwelling units, or ADUs as they are commonly referred to. To start this process, we are producing a series of three videos to introduce the topic and provide context to the community. In this first video, we will cover what exactly is an ADU and why are we doing this project? the timeline of our guideline updates in general, what our current guidelines say about ADUs and their limitations. And we looked at other cities to figure out what, if any, work was being done to incorporate ADUs into their preservation guidelines. So, what is an ADU? As defined by the Denver Zoning Code, an accessory dwelling unit is a second dwelling unit located on the same zone lot as a primary single unit dwelling use. The zoning code also states that an ADU can be attached or detached. For Landmark, we are specifically looking at ADUs as detached structures. Why are we doing this? So, we have listened to the community and our applicants, and we hear you. Our current guidelines lump accessory dwelling units in the same category as sheds, garages, and other small accessory structures. We want to encourage densification and development in historic districts by making the process of applying for EDUs easier for the community. Denver Landmark wants to take this opportunity to be a leader in the preservation field by crafting design guidelines that other cities could look to in the future. The Denver Zoning Code has had some major accessory dwelling unit specific changes completed in the summer of 2023. We want to ensure the ease of use for applicants and make sure that they're working with complementary guidelines that don't compete with each other. The work of updating our design guidelines began in 2012 and was developed through a public process from then to 2014 with some minor updates taking place in 2016. From 2021 is when we kicked off with phase one of the updates being adopted in November of 2022. We are currently on phase two with phases three and four to be announced at a later date. Looking at the phase two timeline specifically, we had our community meetings for the Windows guidelines last fall. For ADUs, our first community meeting is planned for Tuesday, February 27, 2024. Also on deck for the Phase 2 scope are accessibility, site work, and small accessory structures, followed by signage. So, let's talk about our current guidelines and how they presently address ADUs. Essentially, our guidelines for ADUs and other small accessory structures are broken down into three categories, placement, compatibility, and materials. The first set of guidelines that focus on ADUs is 4.18, which is all about placement, and these are simplified bullet points of our full guidelines. Essentially, these guidelines state where new accessory structures can be built in relation to existing adjacent buildings, right-of-ways, and etc. Does the placement, so basically, does the placement of your proposed structure make sense in relation to others? The second set of guidelines focuses on compatibility, which means does the proposed structure fit the context? Our guidelines encourage compatibility for new builds. We ask our applicants to prepare a compatibility sheet, which shows that they've done research in the surrounding neighborhood to encourage and reinforce their design based on existing examples. This is one of those sheets where an applicant provided photos of existing secondary structures to inform the design of their ADU. The third set of guidelines, 4.20, focuses on the materials of the accessory structure. Our materials guidelines aims to ensure that the new builds are using high quality materials that are consistent with those seen in historic districts on existing structures. Similarly, we discourage the overuse of many different materials on one single project. Essentially, our existing guidelines were written to encourage new builds and development while ensuring that the character of Denver's historic districts are not damaged in the process. Now that we have discussed our current guidelines, we wanted to look at other cities to find out what they are and aren't doing with ADUs in their historic districts. Our idea here is that we are not pulling future guidelines from a vacuum, but rather basing them on community input, current preservation standards, and peer city research. We wanted to look at cities at varying scales from across the country and limited our research to cities that had specific guidelines for ADUs in historic districts. Folsom, California, for example, organizes their historic districts based on architectural style and prescribes that new builds must select an appropriate style to imitate 
based on which district it falls in. Boise, Idaho's guidelines focuses on new ADUs being subordinate to the main structure by prescribing that they have the same roof form and materials as the primary structure on the lot and that the size of the ADU is limited by lot coverage. Newport, Rhode Island's ADU-specific guidelines are similar to that of Boise's. The main idea here is that their guidelines are also seeking a subordination of the new build to the primary residence. Lastly, Ann Arbor, Michigan goes a bit further in their design guidelines than Boise and Newport. Ann Arbor new builds are required to be subordinate to the primary structure. In addition to the roof form and massing, ADU here, ADUs here must also have similarly proportioned doors and windows as the primary structure on the lot. Thank you for tuning in today. Please check back next week for the second of three installments on our ADU video series. Next week's video will be narrated by my colleague Brittany Bryant. Following our videos, we will be having the first in-person community meeting on Tuesday, February 27, 2024 at 6.30 p.m located at the Blair Caldwell African American Research Library, which is at 2401 Welton Street. Thank you.